All right, good evening. We are here tonight on April 18th at 6.30 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting to order. First order of business is approval of the minutes from April 10th. I move we approve the minutes from April 10th, 2023. All right, any discussion? No discussion? Oh, I forgot. I will second that. I guess. I right, when there's not, not a second person to second it. All right. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion. All those in favor of approving the minutes from April 10th, signify by saying aye. 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 Two zero. All right. So first up tonight, we have Central End Fire Department birthday. What do you got to tell us, Mr. Benjamin? Well, we're here to present uh, an invite to the select board and town administrator, and, um, really anybody else that's that's watching to uh, to join us. And, uh, Lieutenant, not Lieutenant, Captain Scott Smith. Relative, uh, relatively new <laughs> appointment. To, so we'd actually like to invite the select board and other members of the community to the ninth birthday of the Sunland Fire Department. The party will begin on April 29th from 3 to 9 p.m. We'll be having a chili cook-off contest, displays, demonstrations, and a bonfire. This will be a family-friendly event, and we'd appreciate it if you please look at our Facebook page for more information. What time would things start to get going, Scott? Well, the scheduled time was pretty much be three o'clock. There'd be some kind of events we already have started. At three. Uh, bonfire obviously wouldn't happen until dark. dark. It's been a long time since the fire department's had a bonfire. Yes, probably 15 or 20 years. <laughs> used to do it at Halloween. Yeah, I remember them back here. Is this all happening at the public safety complex? That is correct. Yeah. We'll have, um, of course, the bonfire will be a ways away from the building, but uh, different. Uh, yes, not that interesting getting rid of it um, that way. Um, but there will be um, a lot of a lot of things to do and um, demonstrations, things for. Uh, we have activities for the kids. Nice. So we would love to see anyone and everyone there. And uh, Scott's been instrumental along with uh, Deputy Chief Zioli and a few other lieutenants and um, staff from the fire department in planning it and getting everything lined up. Been, how long have you guys been working on it, Scott? At least a month or just over a month. Yeah. Now you said this is the 90th? It's the 90th. The, the actual date was back in February. Yeah. Um, but uh, Deputy Chief Zero, they wanted to do something in the spring when we could have a larger crowd do something outdoors instead of uh, everybody being crammed in the station with limited, limited activities. That sounds like a great day. Mm hmm And April is always beautiful. Um, we actually do have a rain date, actually, also. I mean, I should have. On May 6th. May 6th, okay. Oh, well, we and that's the have following. Rain. I'm not going to be that's here. That's the following May Saturday, 6th. right? It is the following Saturday, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And same time on the 6th? That's correct. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you for the invite. I'll make a point of uh, bringing my kids over and it'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting. Yeah, it's been a long time, like I said. Long time. I remember very fondly the fire department bonfires growing up here in town. So, sorry about that. All right. Um, anything else? Are we all set, guys? All right. So. I guess we will move on to updates from the Energy Committee. Thank you, gentlemen, very much for coming. Thank and thank you, you for the invite. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Good 
Good evening. My name is Aaron Falvo. I'm a member of the Energy Committee, along with Laura Williams, who's here, and two other members who couldn't make it tonight, our chair, David Goodwin, and Meg fisher Crimpen. Both Laura and I have been on the committee since its origination back in 2005. Um, tonight, we're going to update you on two things. Principally, we'll be talking about our municipal aggregation contract, which is due to expire at the end of this calendar year. We're talking about renewing that contract for at least another two or three years. And we hope to discuss with you our recommendations for um, pricing and different types of products that are available. Secondly, we want to give you a very brief update on um, the situation with our search and uh, our investigation of a transfer station for the town of San Juan, about which we've discussed with this board previously. Jeff, do you have the um, documents for projection? I could pull them up. I, sure. I have them on this flash drive, too, if that's easy. No. Okay. So our consultant for the aggregation over the last three years has been Colonial Power Group. They're our brokers. They're the ones who, who uh, contact different energy suppliers to get quotes for renewable energy um, at bulk purchase. We have joined together with 13 towns in Franklin County to purchase electricity at bulk and thereby get reduced rates. So that's how we've been able to get the rates we've got for Sunderland thus far. We started our original aggregation contract in um, August of 2020 at uh, what was still the height of the pandemic. So we got bargain basement rates at that point uh, because the economy was very much in low ebb. Electricity prices were at an all time low, uh, for, at least within recent history. So we signed a three year contract with very low rates. In fact, today, our electricity rates for our default product are 10.292 cents per kilowatt hour. Eversource's rates for their basic service without any extra renewable energy that we're providing is uh, 21.686. So we've been saving some of the residents as well as the residents of these other towns a lot of money and providing them with a lot of extra renewable energy. Now, as I said, those rates occurred at a specific point in time, which are probably not going to happen again anytime soon. So we can expect the rates to be somewhat higher for the next contract period. And um, so the um, Colonial Power Group, you look in the upper right-hand corner in the yellow box, they, uh, their modeling predicts the basic service rate at, from the, for the first six months of next year to be about 15.8 cents per kilowatt hour. Is that for the aggregate? Sorry? Is that for the aggregate? No, that's for Eversource. That's Eversource, okay. Okay, so that's, that's what, the, if you don't sign up for aggregation, they believe that that's pretty much in the ballpark of what Eversource will charge. Okay. It's a prediction, but in fact, they use the same models that Eversource does, so they're all working off of the same data. So that's probably a pretty close guess um, of what, uh, what we're dealing with. Now, in the rest of this chart, they, uh, the first section is the standard rate. That's what every source uh, offers. Um, they are giving rates for different periods. So we have two suppliers that bidded on our contract. So if, if they were to offer exactly the same product that every source offers, these are the rates that they would offer for different contract periods. Uh, the first six months, I think that's repeated for some reason, and then the next six months of 2024, um, or, or a year contract, a two-year contract, uh, or three-year contract. <coughs> Supplier number one did not bid anything for a three-year contract. And then the next section would be uh, the National Wind Rex. That's one of the optional products that we offer, and the pricing for that. The following section is Mass Class 2 RECs, those are mostly older hydroelectric power plants from Maine. Um, 
not necessarily what we would call the gold standard of renewable. Uh, we're much more interested in solar and wind and things like that. The next section uh, is an example of every source's rates plus 5% more energy. Again, that would be a step downward for Sunderland because our default product now is 25% more renewable energy than, than the standard ever source product. So now if you go to the next page, it gets still higher. Um, that first section is the equivalent to the default product that we're offering now. And these are the new price, price quotes for uh, various time periods that starting in 2020, January 1st, 2024. So again, look, if you look at those prices, they're all still lower than the projected Eversource rate. The, the uh, product that the Energy Committee is recommending to the select board for our default product is the one in the next paragraph, where it says master coin plus 38%. And those rates are still beneath the projected Eversource rate, not by much, but still below it. Um, the reason we're recommending this particular product is because we feel that our mission as a committee is to um, urge and direct residents of this, uh, this town to wean themselves away from fossil fuels and embrace renewable energy to the extent that we can. So given that this product, 38% plus the mass requirement is still cheaper than ever source, and that it's an improvement over our current product. We feel this is in concert with our mission that we should step forward and, and progress in our, in our uh, transition away from fossil fuels toward renewable energy. Now, you'll see that red line says 62% plus 38% equals 100% for 2024. Let me try to explain that if I can. So where does that 62% come from? By law, all electricity supplied products are required to include a mandatory minimum percentage of clean slash renewable energy resources. So some of these resources uh, consist of, the, or the, let me say, the total mass renewable energy requirement consists of various different state initiatives, each with different objectives and different resources that qualify. So some of this is the clean energy standard, the RPS that I just mentioned. Some of it is the um, existing energy sources, which can include things like um, wind, solar, but also land to fill gas. It includes existing um, Clean energy generation, such as uh, large hydro or even nuclear. And then it can include RPS class two, which as I mentioned before, was hydroelectric power and landfill gas. Now landfill gas, it's captured from uh, capped landfills, and it consists primarily of methane. And the reason that's considered a clean energy product, even though when you burn methane or any hydrocarbon, you get carbon dioxide and water, methane is a much more potent greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. So if you just let these landfills outgas, you're letting this very harmful greenhouse gas out into the atmosphere, into the environment. So by capturing it and using it as an energy resource, we're actually improving our greenhouse gas um, scenario. So that's why it's called clean energy, even, tech, even though technically it's still contributing to some greenhouse gas emissions, but it's improving the situation from simply releasing methane. So if you add all those clean energy requirements together, you get 62% for 2024. So if you add the 38% mass class one that these prices reflect, 62% plus 38% means that for a total renewable picture, it adds up to 100%. So that's what those red numbers mean. Just out of curiosity, why are the other two rows starting at 24 for the, the base instead of 62? The other two rows are, um, well, you could add the 62 in there as well, but 
that's uh, looking at, sim at simply the mass class one renewable energy certificates. Um, it's true, you could add 62% and then 50% on top of that and you get 112% uh, renewable, <laughs> which I mean, once you're over 100%, but, but I think what they're trying to say is that um, the, the mass class one wrecks are much better than some of these other landfill gases, old hydro, uh, nuclear, etc. Okay. So the more of the mass class one we have, we have the mix, the, the more renewable, the cleaner the energy is. Okay, that makes sense. So, um, so then the, the rest of the chart goes even higher in terms of the mass class one renewable is 50%. And there we start to get more expensive than, than the Eversource projection, uh, all the way up to 100% mass class one Rex, uh, if you want, 100% renewable energy that's generated here in our region um, from plants that were built after 1997. That's the definition of mass class one. Mass class two are older, older plants, as I said, chiefly. So that's why we, we are recommending to the board the 38% um, plus the renewable portfolio standard as an improvement over what we have now, but still below the ever source price. Back when we started the Art aggregation program, we issued a survey to Sunderland residents, and the surveys mostly came back saying that's exactly what they want. They want as much renewable energy as we can purchase, but still at a price point below every source. That's what we're recommending now. And you're recommending the 36 the months? Of our residents. Are you recommending 36 months on that contract? Or? Um, I believe so. Now, there's a possibility on April 24th, these are all what's called indicative prices. These are not anything we can sign on the dotted line okay. on. On April 24th, we get what's called executable pricing. That's that's the actual contract pricing that we can sign up for. Now, some of these numbers could change on that date, not by much, but we could also get more bidders who didn't supply us with indicative pricing, but will supply us with executable pricing. So we might get other bidders that have better pricing than this. Um, unfortunately, because of the timing, we won't be able to come back to the board to present that information, which is why Colonial Power Group asks select boards to designate someone, usually the town manager, to, to make that decision um, at the spur of the moment, basically, okay. on, on the 24th of April. We will get the executable pricing in the afternoon, and by 3 o'clock, someone has to sign on the dotted line if we decide to continue with the aggregation. Gotcha. And the other thing is that all 13 towns have to agree on two things. They have to agree on the same supplier, and they have to agree on the length of the contract. In terms of which products they want, different towns can choose different products, but they have to agree on those two things, the supplier and the length of the contract. So prior to the day, all 13 towns will uh, attend a Zoom meeting to, to hash that out, to, say, to give sort of a thumbs up or thumbs down on what they want. And they may say, this, this, this contract, this pricing is not good enough. We would rather wait and, and see what we can get later in the year. I'm not sure that's going to happen, because typically the best pricing comes now in the spring, that as we get towards the winter months, things tend to creep up again, yep. which is why they would have to bid now, even though our contract doesn't run out until the end of this calendar year. Okay. So that's, that's basically our recommendation. Now. You have to entertain any questions that you have. So what is the projected amount for Western Mass? Well, if you go back to the 38%, it depends on the length of the No, I'm, I'm looking at... It's this one. It's this one here. It's the, okay, 158. Oh, for, for Eversource? Yes. That's the projected Eversource rate, that if you didn't sign up for the aggregation, that's what the basic yeah. service would be. And so the, the 62 plus 38, if they did a three-year contract, would be 153. So that does have some... So yeah, the, so if we signed up for a three-year contract for the 38%, that would be 15, 
0.336 cents per kilowatt hour, which is below 15.8 cents per kilowatt hour. So that's substantially more re renewable energy for a class that's still less than ever source. Now, um, you know, it's possible. We can't guarantee that every source's summer rates won't dip below our aggregation rate because our aggregation rate doesn't fluctuate with the seasons. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a straight flat rate throughout the duration of the contract. Every source changes its rates every six months. They have winter rates and they have summer rates. The summer rates tend to be lower than winter rates, but not always. Last year they weren't uh, because the price kept going up. But uh, I asked this question of, of the folks at Colonial Power Group, and they say the summer rates might go a little bit lower, but they don't anticipate it going very much lower than that 15 8 number that they have. And they could well go up a bit. Okay. The one thing that's sort of the wild card in this whole situation is not so much the energy market per se, but what they term geopolitical concerns, mainly from the war in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. If Mr. Putin decides you know, he's got to up the ante and start playing hardball with Western Europe in terms of energy supplies or start lobbing bombs over there or who knows what, that could change the whole picture of energy prices. Well, there's also talk of oil being purchased not based on the U.S. dollar, and that yes. could make things change quite a bit also. So. And plus, uh, we had a mild winter this year, and uh, that's what led for prices going down at the present moment. What next year's winter may bring, we don't know. Yep. Um, that's the one thing about global warming that's sort of working in our favor right now. Not that I'm advocating for global warming. Um, and do we have... Um, a general idea of prices in the 10 year kind of a, a time frame have they been steadily going up over time? I know there's a fluctuation. There's fluctuations, um, yes, they have been in general coming up. So, except for you know the lower prices during the start of the pandemic, but that's, yes. that's not to be repeated. I hope. But it'd be a safe, safe assumption to make that fluctuations aside. It, it, this this will be cheaper than what we would be looking at three years from now, all those fluctuations aside. Yes. It's, okay. Uh, every anticipation is that, is that it's going to be more expensive and possibly a lot more expensive. Okay. So, so even though right now the savings looks minimal, that's the worst the savings are going to be most likely over the term. As you said, maybe it drops dead below that over the summer, but then next year it's higher and the third year it's even higher. Yes. Okay. Which is why we're, we're thinking of at least a two-year or three-year contract again, because we anticipate prices to rise um, yep. in, in the rest of the world. And you know, we were so lucky getting the low prices that we did when we started this aggregation, um, because now the rates are more than double um, for what Sunderland residents are paying for through the aggregation. Um, it's, you know, as I said before, it was 10 <coughs> 10.292% you know, versus 21.86A uh, or something like that. Yeah. Wonderful. So that, that's our recommendation. And uh, again, we feel that this is going to progress Sunderland's approach toward a more renewable energy source for its residents in terms of electricity and uh, still saving the money which is what we sort of have been charged to do by the residents of this town, and we, we hope to be able to fulfill that, uh, that request. It's having your cake and eating it, too. It's the best of both worlds. Yep. Well, I'm not sure we go that far. <laughs> <laughs> but we're trying to, we're trying to honor what, what people want and also fulfill our mission as a committee at the same time. Jeff. Um, there are currently two options besides the, the standard. So. Can you, I don't know if you know the answer, but assuming uh, the select board follows your recommendations, everything goes smoothly, what is the average Sunderland resident going to experience on January 2nd or when their January bill comes? Or, or sorry, not January, uh, July. I believe the people who have already signed up for the aggregation, who are already um, members of it, will simply transition to the new aggregation. What's unclear to me at this point, the people who signed up for the two optional products, 
they may have to re-register uh, for, for those, especially if we change those optional products. One of the things I forgot to mention is the Energy Committee also has recommendations for the two optional products. Our current products that we offer to people optionally, they have to specifically request those, are the National Wind, which is 100% out of Texas and I think also Pennsylvania, or what I've been calling the gold standard, 100% mass class one renewable, which is going to be more expensive than every source, but if, if that's your priority, if renewable energy is what you are after, then that's the product for you. That's what I sign up for, in fact. This contract that's coming up, we've decided not to recommend the national wind for a number of reasons, and a number of the other towns in the aggregation agree with us that even though the price point for the national, national wind product is significantly less, our New England grid does not benefit from that energy. It doesn't feed into the New England grid. It doesn't create jobs and renewable energy in this area. Somebody benefits from it somewhere, but not us. So we would rather recommend a product that does actually impact residents here in, in our region. So we are recommending for the first optional product to be the 50%, so slightly more renewable energy than we have now, or that, and that we're also recommending. And then for the second optional product, we are sticking with a 100% mass class one renewable. So the last three are what you're recommending, is that the third to last is the default? And then option one and option two are the okay. second and last ones. Okay. Right. The, two, the two optional products are the 50% and the 100%, which are the last two sections on this chart. Okay. And again, the exact me mechanics of that transition for those people who chose the optional products has yet to be determined. I don't think, especially if the products are different, I think there's no automatic transition there. They may have to contact Colonial Power Group or whichever the supplier is to specifically request those. For everyone else, it's going to be in sort of an opt-out program. They automatically get enrolled in this, um, in this system, in this aggregation product, unless they say no. They'll get a letter in the mail specifying that. It's not going to just be done automatically in that sense. Yeah. It'll be done with everyone's cognizance, with everyone's awareness of what the rates are and with everyone's ability to opt out if they want to opt out of that program. And they can opt back in again at any point with no fee, uh, unless they have signed up with some other third party supplier that charges a fee. That's the only caveat. If you sign up with someone else other than Eversource for your electricity rates, they may have a clause in their contract that's, that uh, issues a fee if you, if you um, change suppliers. But between every source and the aggregation, you can go back and forth as many times as you want with no fee whatsoever. So even if the prices did for some reason dip down to an even lower level next year, we have another pandemic. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Um, but, no, but like, if something else does happen, and you know they discover a huge, a huge reason. natural gas vein, you know, you know, out in Pittsfield, and all of a sudden we have yes. lovely energy prices. Um, our, our town people in town can still just opt out of the thing and right. use other prices yeah. until maybe the price go back goes back up and then they decide to opt back in. Nobody is locked into this program at all. They can get out of it with a simple phone call if they want. Um, some people, yeah, they look very closely at the rates and if it's you know a fraction of a penny load, they'll switch out and then they'll come back if the situation changes again. You know that's really pennies on your electricity bill, maybe a couple of dollars. That's nothing. Mm -hmm. I think the effort of doing that is probably greater than, than the money that you can save. Um, we're trying to offer the town the best deal that we can get for them um, within, within our predictions of what, what things are going to be like. But you're right, yes, if some strange event happens that electricity rates uh, offered by Eversource suddenly get very low again, people can sign up for Eversource again. They won't get the same amount of renewable energy. But if the price point is, is the design factor for them, then yes, they can do that. Okay. So in, in light of that, there's, there's, I see zero reason not to, not to do this. I mean, 
even if nobody uses it, okay, but there's only benefit if people do. Um, it's just really, for me, a question of which one of these we go with, and I, I agree with you on the, the 62 plus 38 being the, a good default. Um, gives people room above that for people who want to sign up for it, um, but also maintains the lowest you know, introductory price for people coming into it. So. Yeah. The only sort of debate we had on the Energy Committee was with the optional products, that there was some discussion, maybe we should offer an optional product that was the cheapest and with even less renewable energy for those people you know, on limited incomes or for whom renewable energy was not their main issue. But in the end, we decided we are the Energy Committee. We have this mandate from the town to promote renewable energy. So we felt that that would not be in keeping with, with our mission to, to recommend that type of product. So we decided not to do that and instead recommend the 50% and the 100%. Cool. a way to guide the town towards a, a cleaner energy future. Thank you. We appreciate that. So could I just confirm that there's yes. one default and two optional? Correct. Okay. And you're looking for the select board to vote to authorize me to sign the contract because there's not another opportunity. Exactly. I mean, we're going to um, sign today, but if something better comes up on the 24th, we want you to empower Jeff to be able to act uh, on that day to sign something that's, that's the best deal for signing. So if I move something like, I we, we authorize the town administrator to either go with the options suggested by the energy committee or if a better deal comes up, authorized to move forward on that. Something like that? Perfect. Okay. And I will second that. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Two zero. Thank you. So very briefly now, the second uh, topic that I mentioned was about the transfer station. Um, we had explored the uh, property behind the public site safety complex as what we thought was a ideal location. It has three-phase power already there on site. Um, it's centrally located in town, uh, right next to the, the police and fire department, so we don't expect that listen to occur right back there. The drawbacks are a couple, however. Um, on either side of that parcel of land are is, uh, farmland actively being farmed. And by law, there has to be a 100-foot buffer between uh, the adjacent property, which are farmland, and any other types of use, for example, a transfer station. That 100-foot buffer could be waived if the abutters agreed to that. But the abutters did have some concerns, which we took seriously. We had a meeting with them, and really with all people involved, members from the public safety complex, the highway department, and other departments in town. The other obstacle of that particular site is that that land itself is designated as prime farmland, and you would have to get a waiver from the Department of the Environmental Protection to site a transfer station on that property. It's not clear we could get that waiver. Um, so both the issues of the, the two abutters, as well as that obstacle, led us to rethink that maybe that's not the best choice for the town, even though the siting is probably ideal. The um, Mr. Jim Scheffler from the Department of Environmental Protection looked at the properties in town and, and recommended that we look into a parcel that used to be the old town dump, right uh, near the junction of Falls Road and Route 47. Um, that's not currently owned by the town, but it is privately owned, and that because of its history, it can't be used for farmland. And right now, it is owned by a person who is not using it for any other purpose and paying taxes on it. So Jim Scheffler suggested, well, maybe that person would like to sell that parcel of town, that parcel of land to the town for a dollar to be relieved of that tax burden, and we could possibly use that site for a transfer station. So we're exploring that possibility. But even before we do that, 
we wanted to step back a bit and really ask the town, survey the town to see would people even be interested in using a transfer station? Is this a popular idea that would fly in town? Before we go through all this effort to, to with permitting and, and finding a, a suitable parcel, who's going to use it? And would they be? Are, are we getting the green light from the residents of the town? We've already gotten the green light from the select board, but we want to know how popular this idea is among residents. So we prepared a survey, asking them those types of questions, asking them what, how, how it, they might be financed, and would they be amenable to that, what days they would want it to operate on, how frequently, uh, what types of materials, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we will have this survey ready very soon. We hope to distribute it at town meeting, uh, electronically, via the town's website, um, possibly send home with the school newsletter to our elementary school students, have it in paper form at the public library and, and possibly in this building as well. And to cast as wide a net as we can to get people's reaction to this idea before we <coughs> proceed much further in, into the weeds, so to speak, with, uh, with setting up a transfer station. So that's where we are. I just wanted to let you know that the original parcel we were looking at has proved to be more problematic than we thought. But there are other alternatives that we're exploring. Um, but our first step, I think, is to really sort of test the temperature of the town with regard to this idea. So none of the other town-owned parcels are really? No, we looked into all of them, and, and there, there were problems with, with each one, either access or location or other problems. And the parcel you're looking at, is that not able to be farmland because of its history as a transportation? Yeah, so right. it would sort of make sense in yeah, general for the town. Yeah, it's an actual landfill type job. Yeah, like if, if we're going to be putting a transfer station somewhere, let's not put it somewhere else that could be farmland and it suddenly becomes not usable for farmland because we muck it up. I'd much rather, you know. Yeah, I mean, the footprint that we're talking about is, is very small. I mean, it's not any type of a large field. But still, we want to preserve as much farmland in town as we can. And if it had two options, one of them is use something that was already used as a dump before, that would be the one I would go with for sure. So that's, that's what we're exploring, and that was what was recommended by, by DEP for us to, to look into. So. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next order of business we have is appointing Hollis Graves as full member of Zoning Board of Appeals. Yes, there's a vacancy on the Zoning Board of Appeals with the passing of Mr. Teslowski. Um, Mr. Graves has served as an alternate member of the ZBA for a number of years um, and has expressed interest and has the support of the ZBA chair for full membership. Okay, I'm trying to get that. Are you able to, is there a document there? Uh, just no. emails from the chair oh. and uh, the applicant saying that they were interested. Okay. Could you just need a motion to, from us on that? Or? Yeah, motion to appoint, or vote to appoint. Okay, yeah. um, then I will move the appoint Hollis Graves as a full member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay, I'll second that. Any discussion? Is Hollis on or anything? No, nope. just one in case he wanted to say something. Okay, I'm um, hearing no discussion. I. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Two zero. So next up we have. Award Accounting Services Agreements. This is the agreement we talked about last time for the new company getting us up to speed and all that? Yeah. Um, Can you recap that for us? Sure. So last week I um, put out a request for written quotations, which is 
the procurement method for um, procurements between ten and fifty thousand dollars, basically outlining the scope of services and the qualifications, um, sent it out to three organizations, um, got two responses back, um, and I guess part of the discussion that I wanted to have is it's a challenge because we don't know we don't know where we are so it's hard for anybody to bid realistically uh, I would prefer not to pay somebody hourly because it's too easy for the project not to be completed if they're paid hourly um, and my goal is to have the project completed in a timely fashion. So uh, I, part of me wants to um, not award an, award a contract to either of these um, and do another solicitation when we actually know what we're asking for. Um, but. <laughs> Don't have an accountant, so <laughs> it, it's kind of a. Uh, what would the time frame be on knowing that? Do you even know that? Do you, do you know what the time frame is to know? I mean, I asked them two weeks ago, and I still don't have an answer. So no, I mean, uh, I have half an answer. Um, so. And, and what's the big concern with going with one of the two bids? Is that 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 we're going to be paying more than we need to? Or uh, so the the concern is one that the the catch up costs were an hourly um, and regardless I'm going to put in a, you need to have this completed by such and such a date. Um, I guess my concern is the 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 higher bidder is the one that's been working with the town helping the cog and is so is more familiar <laughs> with where we stand. Um, but they're more expensive and procurement wise we don't have a choice we take the lowest bidder as long as they meet the qualifications so um, we we can hire them I mean they they serve service other municipalities um, there, there were no issues with any of the references um, so we could try maybe they'd be great and we're saving the town a bunch of money um, but my concern, yeah, is still that, you know, we hire them and we're sitting here at June 30th and hopefully things haven't gotten worse, but not necessarily better. And we've been paying hourly just to, I guess, tread water. And so are, are both of the bids hourly or is just the... Both of them are hourly. Uh, the higher bid had a, they included a not to exceed price, but again, when we write the contract we can do something like that for either of them so that's okay. but i mean the hourly rates were significantly different okay. are those in the accounting folder the hourly rates yes in the bottom of the um of that in the in the middle column okay so that is a substantial difference that's not just a little bit mm -hmm. So the monthly fee is just a flat fee, and then plus hourly on top of that would be? The catch-up. Right. So this is what they would charge us per month. Just to, to do, the, do just the, to, the books normally, yeah. To, yeah. Yeah, to move forward. And then it's catch-up is hourly. So, and you can say the figures. It's a public document at this yeah. point, so. Yeah, so, so for those watching, um, the higher bid is two hundred and five dollars an hour, and the lower bid is seventy five dollars an hour. So that is a substantial difference. That's almost a three to one ratio. Okay. I was just trying to open up the right document here to look at it myself, but I mean, my concern is just that we've talked about how account, uh, you know, if you hire an accountant, it's going to be a six figure job, which to me says that a good accountant costs two hundred two hundred dollars an hour. <laughs> and if a good accountant costs two hundred dollars an hour, what are we getting for seventy five dollars an hour? And is that that we're getting a really good deal on a good accountant, or is that that we're getting you know somebody who's not qualified and they're charging us hourly, and so they don't have to worry about producing? Um, 
So what you're suggesting is that we don't accept either bid and then we go for another bid once we have a better picture and hopefully we get one that, we're, hopefully what we get at that point is more to our liking? Um, I guess I'm saying that that is an option. <laughs> I, I, I really don't know what the right so, thing to but do But we could also still, and I just want to make sure, even if we choose to wait and see where we are, where we can get some better information for people to bid on, we could still go with one of these people. We would, so they would have to bid again. Right, yeah. but let's see. So if we knew, and again, these are just gross exaggerations, underestimates. If we knew it was going to be 10 hours of catch up work, we know that now versus right now we don't know if there and we know there's more than 10 hours i understand that but we don't know if it's 10 hours or a thousand hours and once we can nail that down a little bit better you'd be more comfortable going out to bid again I, yes but realistically if it's not now that we're talking about it if it's 10 hours or a thousand hours if the hourly rate's 200 or 75, whoever the low bidder is isn't going to change. So it really, it's not, I guess I don't really think that the results of the, of the procurement are going to change, but we might get a clearer from the get-go, like we will get caught up and they understand that there are two distinct things happening here. There's keep the trains running and then there's fix all the stuff that needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. And also there, there's a, there isn't necessarily just one number of number of hours to catch up. It may be that one company gets caught up in 150 hours and the other company takes 450 hours to get caught up because again we don't know what the who's being assigned to our case and, and what kind of team we're looking at or whether it's you know the lowest person on the totem pole their first case right so, you know so that becomes a question too is at the 205 dollars an hour is that a three-person team working on this versus the 75 dollar an hour a single person working on this those are very different yeah those are things i don't know the answer to yeah and neither do i um Another one of the challenges is I asked the FERCOG for help with the procurement and they don't have experience doing this type of procurement. Um, so we're just, I'm trying to do the best I can. But I agree, you know, that, that type of information, you know, person hours, right? Not just, yeah. Right, because if it's 205 out dollars an hour and it's that expensive because they're trying to get caught up by in the time frame I said that makes sense yeah I mean I, I think that the, the challenge with restarting the bidding process is I guess we have minimal accounting services until we get somebody else on and also and then we're getting that much further yeah. behind yeah, if we take another month to get this started, then whoever we end up going with has that much harder time getting across the finish line, and that's a problem too. Um, I mean, it's a huge difference in price enough where I'm almost tempted just to say, let's go with the 75 and give them a shot at it, because at the end of the day, if it costs us a third as much, or a third of the total cost to get caught up, that would be a huge savings to the town. Um, and in light of all the trouble we've been having with the fur cog, accounting services, it would be nice to have a win on this for the town. But I also see <laughs> the concerns with it. <laughs> so it's, okay, so it's the 18th of April. So realistically, we have two and a half months before we want to be closing books, right? Yeah, I mean, we're not closing them. Or, sorry. But it's a, at the end of July, August when we're actually closing them. But yeah. But we'd like to be caught up yeah. in, the, yeah. in yeah. that period of time. Um, if, if we said, go get back, get more bids, how long would we need? We don't even know how long it would be before we'd be in a position where it would be better to get more bids. 
let's say best case scenario, that's a couple of weeks, right? I mean, it could be tomorrow. It could be tomorrow. <laughs> let's just say two yeah. weeks just yeah. for the for picking a number, and then it takes you another two weeks to get the bids and stuff like that. We're now going from two and a half months to try to, to, to of, of time for them to get caught up to a month and a half, and we might come back and we have two bids and now it's two hundred and fifty dollars an hour and one hundred and fifty dollars an hour because we waited longer and now they're more worried about getting caught up and all that stuff. So I don't know, I'm kind of leaning towards accepting the lower bid and I mean it. Are, I guess it really comes back to the, the the criteria. Are they both? qualified to do the job? Are they both going to, based on your knowledge of them, going to produce? I mean, if you're, if you're talking about one of them's a multinational company, the other one's two guys in their basement, and yes, the, the bidding's lower, but you aren't sure it's going to happen, that's a different circumstance. But if, if a Ponte or a Ponte is a good company, then... One is a national company and one is a father and son operation. Um, but, you know, the father and son operation has 30 years of experience with municipal accounting. So, well, and that I'm not might... discounting. And, and I'm not saying that you were either. Um, but I think that, yeah, as far as scale, you know, the other thing that we could do also, and I was trying to do it in one, is throw out the bids come back and say, hey, basic accounting services, give us your best bid. Looks like it'll probably be the low bidder again. They can come in, they can take a look at what our situation is, If they and then the high bidder sort of knows what our situation is, and then we have the catch-up project as a different procurement. But do we really want to end up with two accounting firms at the same time? I mean, and, and yes, we might be able to come out ahead money-wise there or something like that, but then we end up having two accounting firms, one of which is trying to, I mean, I feel like picking one and having them do everything makes the most sense because at the very least, when they're catching up, they're gaining experience with our systems and our numbers and everything like that, that's going to help them with their day-to-day -day work and vice versa. So, <sighs> Crystal, what are you thinking? Yeah, so... As far as software and stuff goes, do they both use the same software system? They would both be comfortable using our current software system. Okay. Um, I think they both prefer a different system. Um, and we can, I got general, you know, $25,000 would be the cost. Uh, right. For, well, no, I'm just, you know, yeah, when you yeah. start looking at, Splitting something, right? Splitting the cat, you know, like the suggestion, potentially splitting the catch up from the day to day. Do we want two systems in here doing it? Do we want to be paying to maintain two systems during that potential catch up time also? Well, I'm just thinking of how much are we going to spend paying two accountants to talk to each other? When it could be one accountant with all the numbers in their in their system or all the numbers in their brain or whatever, um, and honestly, like if if the if the lower bidder is, I, I'm assuming the lower bidder is the father son duo. We know who we're getting. It's not a huge company. It's not the intern. It's not the whatever. We know who we're getting. We're getting the two people who have this reputation built, and that honestly makes me feel more confident about them than anything. Um, with the larger one, we really don't know. Who it could be? We it's a large, uh, you know, and, and we're also much more more likely to not be a big fish in their pond, you know, where we would most surely be one of the larger clients for the smaller firm. Well, so. so the smaller firm has experience with regional school systems. Yeah. Um, CPA. Yeah, I checked. That. Yeah. Uh, they also have. Treasure experience too. I mean, honestly, I, I was almost expecting to be having the opposite conversation, whereas the, the small, more experienced firm was more expensive, and the larger firm that hires lots and lots of people would be less expensive because they're going to have fewer people with, with lots of experience and more people with less experience with possibly less degrees and that kind of thing working on also. So I kind of feel like we're, we're getting a real deal on the 
on the little bitter. Is there any type of I mean, trial's the wrong word. Um, you know, obviously we don't want to be doing this again in six months or a year. We really don't. Ever. Correct. But. Yeah, so I, um, I asked the treasurer to just reach out to her network and see if anybody has worked with them before and haven't. Um, she didn't get any negative responses, um, so I, yeah, I I agree, um, but I I guess part of me thinks we're there's going to be a change in how we do things anyway, yeah. going from Fergot to somebody else, mm -hmm. um, and it's probably internally going to be some, somewhat a similar change in that we're not going to really see it again that much. We're going to talk to them on the phone or an email. Yeah. Um, and so maybe, to Nathaniel's point, it makes sense if we don't have any concerns and it's significantly less expensive, we give it a shot because I agree we don't want to be doing this in another year, but we've been doing it for three years. <laughs> like. Yeah. And there's also no guarantee that we go the other one and we don't end up having a similar situation where we aren't happy with them and we're back here having paid extra money for a year and still unhappy and finding somebody else. So, I mean, if, if it was 175 an hour versus 205 an hour, this would be a much more nuanced conversation, I think. But like, this is almost a third of the cost of the other one. That's a... The inner poor person is having a hard time <laughs> just jumping into that. <laughs> yeah, but then, you know, I'm looking here how many. So some of my concerns yeah. looking at this is we're looking for 15 hours a week. Let, let's assume the catch up is done. And then we want to move forward at 15 hours a week, right? Yep. Is what we're thinking. So we start looking at the work experience that states a date to present, right? Yep. So, you know, presently district treasurer, you know, January 2005 to present. Shirley Regional School District, July 2011 to present. We don't know what time commitments this two-person team already has to add our 15, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying they can't do it. I, I just, I, I start to wonder, do we become the overload for them where we're not getting what we potentially want it's a very good point because that's what happened with the fur cog right we were bigger than than they were comfortable with and uh it didn't wound up not working out after a while um i mean i don't want to you know i don't want to say how many hours someone can work but if we know we need 15 hours and we start you know we don't know what all these other places they're currently working at are sucking up for time and i don't want to be so it looks like there's a district treasurer for two school districts an accountant for the regional dispatch district in nashoba valley and there was a fourth one wasn't there Oh, yeah. and then, then the town accountant operator for the Sterling. for Sterling. Um, yeah. So, so there's two of them. So, right. roughly, right. If two part-time right. jobs. Right. But then, if we're saying it's fifteen dollars, uh, sorry, fifteen hours uh, to 
I think they said it was they said it was going to be 15 hours. They estimated to catch up per month or something like that. Uh, 10 to 20 hours for each month. For each month, no. To catch up. Um, how right? How quickly will they be able to catch up given their other work? Right. Um. It's a tough one because, again, we've been the overload. We've been that straw that broke the camel's back before. Yeah. I also just, I know how a lot of contractors and third-party vendors work. And if they're overloaded and they're not looking to take on new business, then in general they either don't return a bid or if they do, they intentionally up their prices to be like, well, I don't really want to take this work on, but I will if the money's good. Their bid doesn't really scream that to me. Their bid screams, yeah. no, we want this work. We're looking for this work. We want to make a bid that's low enough to get it. <clears throat> yeah. If that's the case, it kind of makes it... I don't, I don't see them going through all that and taking on a low, a low dollar per hour job if they don't have the time to do it and they aren't looking for work. So kind of... I know. It, it, and I will say that, that I tough. learned about them because they were actively reaching out to, not us, but to other communities asking about account, like trying to get new clients. So, so either it says to me that they, they do have the capacity or they're an up and coming business that's looking to expand and maybe they're looking to hire a third person and take on another person, that kind of thing, which does have its own concerns, going back to what we were talking about before, about like who are we going to have seen on this case, um, if this is the impetus for them to add a, another person, are we going to end up with someone who's just learning their system and just training with them um, in, in the very time critical period of time, or are they going to be shifting some of their more stable client work over to a new person and having the, you know, the full guy with the 40 years experience? It, there's a lot of guessing going on today. Yeah, there really <laughs> does are. not make me super happy. Yeah. I'd love to not have to guess on this stuff. Um, yeah, and I mean, they're really not that far away that they can't be here on site if necessary occasionally. Right. Right. Yeah, you're not going to... They could, they could definitely be on site um, at least once a month. And I'm looking at the resume and there's a lot, of, a lot of municipalities and a lot of municipalities that would work with them for extended periods of time. You know, yeah, and seeing a lot of five plus years. Yeah, and a lot of those are, I would say, obviously some of them are bigger, some of them are closer to our size. So, I mean, Harvard Mass is, a, I would say, a similarly sized town to us. Yeah, but Templeton, some of those aren't, I don't think, a whole huge amount different either. Yeah. So, so what do you think we'd benefit from waiting on this and sending a bid out once we know a little more? Um, I, I think that the benefit, and again, I think I can do this in the contract, is that you know we would hopefully be able to say, our cash book is reconciled through such and such a date. Our receivables are reconciled through such and such a date. We need to be caught up, fully reconciled both within 45 days of the current date. How long will that take you? And without knowing where we're, how far back they have to go, I don't, they can't give a reasonable estimate. And I wouldn't yeah. hold them to whatever they're, you know. Yeah. No. Obviously there's a plus minus there, but. Um, that would be the benefit to me, uh, mm -hmm. is understanding the scope of the catch-up work. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess one of the things we could do is, in the contract, put a minimum number of hours. Like, we, we expect that the, that the firm will be able to supply a minimum of 15 hours a week towards the catch-up, or whatever number we pick. Because so, if, if that's the thing that might alleviate our concerns of them not having the time for us, if they're signing a contract saying we can guarantee one of our people is going to have X number of hours per week for the next number X number of months to get you caught up, that kind of takes away the the we don't know how many how many how much work you get done. Okay, but at least we know you're going to be working at this particular rate because if if it turns out that there's a lot of work to be done and they're like, well, if we can only do eight hours a week for the next three months, 
that's a problem for us. Um, if we're putting in there 15, 20 hours or something like that minimum and they're aware of that and that's part of our contract, at the very least we're getting that time. And, and if it does turn out that there's more work than they can get done for that, of course they can go over that. Um, so are you looking more for a flat rate for catch up? For someone that's to what I was hoping, a say, project, yeah. You know, for $15,000 we can get you caught up in 90 days or in 45 days or in 30 days or... And, and the reason I wanted to do it that way is because I was told 13 months ago, yes, we'll catch you up. And it was just, hey, we'll give more hours, more hours, and it didn't actually happen. So I wanted it to be, hey, you're not getting your money until we're caught up, is what I would like to say. You say you can do it, but show us, and then we'll pay you. <laughs> it's just really hard to ask that when we can't even tell you. It's like. Inside this box exactly. is a job. We want you to do it. We want to tell you how much it's going to cost, but you yep. can't look inside. No, <laughs> you know? I, I, I don't blame them for not giving you yeah. a price. I totally get where they're coming from. And that kind of brings it back to the, we have two and a half months, and do we spend another month trying to nail them down and get them to agree to it, at which point they have a month and a half to get us caught up, and we might not, might not let the cost of having them try to get us caught up in a month. Yeah, I mean, I think the other thing that, that could potentially happen is if we go with the low bidder, they come in, they take a look at our books, and they turn around and leave. And they go, yeah, this isn't what we signed up for. Um, which, at least we have an answer. <laughs> and but in terms of procurement, my understanding would be that if that happened, we would then be able to go with the other bidder. Yeah, I mean, I think that... It, yeah. Mm. Or we have, have to probably have to rebid. It. rebid. Um, yeah, but that would probably have a different scope of the work too. Yeah. And that's the other thing is, realistically, we are doing. I am going to be doing this again in a month because this is only through June thirtieth. This is not our permanent accounting. So I, I, I kind of feel like if we appoint it to the lower bidder, get them to start looking at it, worst case scenario, they say, this is way too much work for us, we can't make this work, they back out and we have gotten from that interaction a better idea of how much work it is. Yeah, I mean, and I don't think that they are going to back out. I, that that would be the worst case scenario. Um, but I, yeah, I... Uh, this is. Yeah, I mean, I guess I would say I would prefer to award it to the low bidder. At least that way, work can start. Yep. Um, and, you know, I, I guess probably what, what would wind up happening is if things didn't work out as we hope, I would be working on a procurement for starting July 1 anyway, and I would have learn my lessons and probably hire an accountant starting July 1st, and then do a separate procurement and hire somebody to catch us up. And part of the, whoever we hire over the next three months, two and a half months, it would be what is the scope of <laughs> where we are so that I can hire somebody to get us caught up. Mm -hmm. that's, that's sort of how, where I'm leaning also is I'd like, to get, I'd like to get somebody in the building as fast as possible and we have a very big, clear winner price-wise. Welcome, Tom. We are talking about accounting services. Super interesting. Oh, bet you had more excitement than I have for the last hour and a half. So just to catch you up on where we're, we're looking, uh, we have two bids for the accounting catch-up. Um, we, well, we have two bids for both 
accounting services in general and also the catch up. Um, the big difference is that the catch up, one of the bids came in at $205 an hour and the other bid came in at $75 an hour. So almost three times as much for one versus the other one. Um, and we were just discussing whether there was really any reason why we wouldn't go with the lower bidder. Did you uh, do a background check on the Ponte? Did, did some uh, reference checks and had the treasurer reach out to her um, listserv. How did it look? Didn't get any negative um, responses. Uh, the treasurer didn't get any responses. But. Did you get uh, any responses that we should be concerned about? No, no concerning response. The one, just to catch up, the one thing we were discussing in terms of her concern is um, it being a small operation, the father-son duo, um, just are concerned of whether or not they're going to have the time, um, the man hours available for us that we need in order to get caught up in time. But we were discussing having a minimum number of hours be put into the contract so we could be able to do that. Did they do any town locally? Uh, not locally. A bunch of Shirley yeah. Templeton, mm -hmm. Shirley Templeton, Groton, Shirley Dunst Templeton. Dunstable. Shirley Templeton. Yeah, I know. <laughs> really? I, How long did you work on that one? I didn't. It just fell. It just right flows? Out. It just flew. Oh my right gosh. Out. So Shirley. that area they have, you know, is where they're. So what's your recommendation? So we were talking about. I think it's award to the low bidder and get them started, and um, and if it doesn't look like it's working out, then and this is just to the end of this fiscal year, correct? Right? Yep, yep. So then we. What do you think? Ready to vote? Yeah. Yeah. You want to vote? Please. So I motion we award it to Fredaponte Accounting. Services. Seconded. A yeah, motion made seconded to uh, have a Ponte and Ponte uh, work on the to the end of this fiscal year on our accounting and then put you're gonna put out an RFP for next for next year. Yep. Continue. Yep. Do a three year contract? Yep. Look for uh, one year with two Renewal. renewals. Yep. yep. Okay. Okay, we have a motion made and second. Any other discussion? Without uh, hearing any other discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. When, when can they start? They said they were available as soon as they can. So I'm going to call them up tomorrow and see when they can get in here. And, and we have money. Talking about the contract. And we have the monies available through, uh, through, through the uh, ARPA. And ARPA. then I'll look at getting the um, monies that we paid. Um, reimbursed. Yeah. Okay. If we right. get reimbursed, can we put that back into ARPA or do we have to put that into somewhere else? We cannot put it into ARPA. We can choose not to spend ARPA in that way, though. Okay. So we, we, we commit to spending the money, but then don't end up. Okay. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. All right. So if we needed $4 from ARPA to balance it out. Yeah just less than the original request. So is the Warren article the last thing we have on the business? Yes. Um, and I think before we start doing the actual recommendations, um, there were a couple of changes to the warrant. So I think that you need to take some votes to remove one article and add two more. Um, what article do you want to take out, Jeffrey? There was an unnecessary article about the override, just asking town meeting if oh, they yeah. wanted to do the override. That's not necessary. So if you want to remove the previous Article 5. Okie dokie. Motion to remove previous Article 5. I motion we remove the previous Article 5 from the war. Seconded. A motion made and seconded to remove Article previously numbered Article 5. All those... In favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, Jeffrey, that's gone 3 0. Thank you. Um, so there are two additional articles. 
um, which are currently six and seven. And that is to transfer funds into the general stabilization and uh, capital stabilization funds. So that would be most likely coming from free cash. Okay, so we're, we're all set. You're, we're, have you have you reviewed the budget? So the budget's all in order. Uh, we have not reviewed it tonight. You reviewed it last week, right? Yes. So we're all set. So we can we have numbers that you can live with. We have numbers that I can live with. They are not the same numbers that were presented last week. Okay. Um, so I can talk about those again. Uh, uh, last week, I think we had 150000 in free cash to balance the budget. Um, and, right, and, and we're all we're okay with that? Well, it's now it's 183 plus 50,000 for OPEB. Um, okay. So that that was. Uh, so you're using 183 from free cash in this year's budget. Yes. Okay. And then the 50 for OPEB. Right, so we talked about upping the OPEB. Right, from 33 to, to 50. Yeah. And that's what's increasing, the, that's part of what's increasing the number up to 183? No, so the total free cash is going to be 232. Because all of OPEB comes from free cash. So, right. So the 180 was the 150 from last week plus the $30,000 deficit that we had is the 180 and then we're adding another so the, the, the 50 is right. not really so much going into the budget as it is the OPEB line item right it's just we're also taking it from free cash so the OPEB I don't have a problem with the OPEB just because that's not a reoccurring expense I mean it is but it, that that you know next year we don't have to put 50,000 into it or Seventy-five thousand. Right. Right. We what? And if we go, if we go back to our free use of free, if we go back to our use of free cash policy, that would be in line with would be in line with the policy, right? Okay. So I don't have a problem with that. If you said now, if we're just doing, if we're adding another fifty thousand of reoccurring expenses, yes, that would be we'd different. probably have to have more of a discussion about that. Yep. Okay. okay. So, what would you like to talk about then, Mr. Town Administrator? You want to talk about Article 6 first? Sure. To see if the town will vote to transfer from free cash a sum of sums of money to be capital stabilization fund? Yes. How much do you want to add? Um, that would be in the motion, uh, capital stabilization, 200000 200000 So, you want us to have them... Article read to see if the town will vote to transfer free cash or some or some money to the Jefferson Fund of two hundred thousand dollars. Yes. Okay. That's a good place to salt away some money. And then the five was the regular stabilization also? Six was yeah, two hundred thousand to capital stabilization. Sorry. Capital stabilization. Yeah, two hundred to general and two hundred to capital. Uh, six, six was capital, capital and seven is general. General, yep. Okay, so I'll have a motion two hundred thousand to uh, capital stabilization. All right, and make a motion we transfer two hundred thousand to capital stabilization from free cash. To include an article to do to that? include an article to do that, yeah. Or that we recommend it, yes. Let's just go ahead and do it. <laughs> seconded. Okay, motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? And now it's nice. Now now we kind of are getting numbers back. We knew we were going to put something in this, but we, uh, we didn't know what we'd be able to uh, afford to put in. Now we do. Okay. All those in favor of the 200 for the Capital Stabilization Fund article, please signify by saying aye. Aye. 
Jeff, you got three zero on that. Article seven to see if the town will vote to transfer from free cash or some or some of monies of the general stabilization, and you wish to put two hundred. We sh we can afford to do two hundred thousand on this also, right? Yes, we can. Okay. The reason that we want to do this is when June, th when the calendar changes from June thirtieth to July first, all of a sudden our available free cash is now zero. Stabilization doesn't go away though. Right. So if something comes up, although we would need a two-thirds vote to get it out of stabilization, we would have money to get it out. That's why we're doing it. So it's kind of salting salting that money away. Yep. Okay. Thanks Questions? So. No. Okay. Motion? I motion we include Article 7 to move $200,000 from free cash to the general stabilization fund. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded to set the value at 200000 for Article 7, which is money from free cash to general stabilization. All those in favor of this, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, 3-0 on that. Did, I'm sorry. Did you vote to add those two articles? They weren't previously yes. in the... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was a... So, yeah. So those that, were to That add, was the whole um, premises of the articles. Okay. Yeah. And then, well... Do the, the then right. we do the vote on the recommendations afterwards. Yeah. Okay, you ready for votes on the articles? Yes. Article one. So see if the uh, town here vote, will vote to hear the report to the select board, school committee, and all their town board officers, committees, commissions. Select board, would you like to hear all these? Sure. I motion we we recommend Article One. I second that. So we have a motion made and seconded to recommend Article One. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, that's a three zero. Article Two. Do do we vote on salaries? I don't think you vote on. We don't. Salary. We don't vote on. We have not historically voted on salaries. Yep. Yeah, there is no recommendation for that. Okay. Article Three. To see if the town will vote to raise appropriate transfer, oh, the old budget things. Hmm. So, are we happy with the budget? Jeff, you want to give a quick re rundown on the budget? Yeah. Um, we are going to be spending about $10.2 million. Um, that is raising and appropriating about nine and a half, um, including um, monies from the state, uh, the PEG access fund, uh, the sewer fund, and free cash. Um, and I will note that oddly, and I, I'm new, but other town administrators are saying that this is the first time in their 20-year experience that the house budget has less money for local <laughs> governments than the I, governor's I, budget. I didn't know if you talked about it, but I'll tell you, when I saw that, I was... Okay. In my opinion... The state, the state had so much money in its coffers last year that it had to give money back, right? And we are absolutely doing nothing to the correct, and, and this is what I don't understand. If this was the Sunderland Select Board that came up with a budget and didn't help fund education, our school committee, our residents, our parents would be all over us, okay? And yet, the governor and our elected state reps come out with a budget and doesn't do anything to help with our educational expenses, and no one says anything. How is that right? So, I, it leads us to the thing is that, and this, I guess this is my point. If you want to make a difference in your community, run for an elected office in, in your town. 
because you have more influence on doing good things in your town than you do on the state level. And, 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 and Nathaniel, I hope you recognize that. I, oh, I, yeah. I've gotten more done here in a year than I would have in the front. And Nathan, Nathaniel ran, 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 and actually I thought Nathaniel made some very good points when he ran, when you ran for state rep. That being said, I think Nathaniel has done more as he didn't, has done more to help the average, average citizen of Sunderland than if he was a state legislator. I, I just can't, I, I look at that and I can't, so we're not, we're not helping with education. We're not funding regional transportation, A. That's a simple thing. Fully fund regional transportation. How hard is that? But we don't do that. We give 30 bucks, $30 a child. For education, we we allow um, charter schools. They, they the way the formula works, it's a percentage of the the cost of education, and then you look at school choice. It's been five thousand since school choice was established. Twenty years ago, nineteen ninety three, right? Nineteen ninety three. Yeah. So, I, I again. Okay, sorry, I ramble. Anyway, so go ahead. Where were you? Uh, whether or not you wanted to recommend the budget article to town meeting. So I wish I had. I wish I had the House of Representative budgets two weeks ago. Be nice. We missed on that one, but it doesn't prevent all of us from making. Um, calls. Very true. All right. So, Jeff, basically, a quick summation. You're, we're looking at a. I never thought it was going to happen, but we're looking at a 3.8% increase of general government, 2.2 in town buildings, 10.5 in the police department, 8.8 .8 in the fire department. Inspectional services 8.9, highway 2.0, total health and sanitation 19.1, total library 6.8, elementary 3.6, Franklin County Tech Assessment down 26.4%, Frontier Assessment up 5.9%, out of district tuition and transportation down 50%, Total benefits of insurance, which includes us going from 60 to 65 percent of 7.5 percent. Total operational budget of 4.2. Wastewater up 4.4. Total depth and interest 4.3 percent. So a grand total of three increase the budget of 379,104 dollars for a 4.2 percent increase. Um, sorry, what are you looking at? Hmm. Is that what you all have? It says the TM budget is what he was looking at. The tab on oh, budget recommendations. That, that, sorry, that tab has not been updated. Uh-huh. So what do you have? Um, I have select board is 11%. Accountant is 30%. Assessors is 1%. Uh, collector treasurer is three. Clerk is. We're, we're looking at the town. We're looking at the the town meeting budget, not the line items. Yeah, I don't. I I haven't updated that town meeting budget yet. So what number are we putting in there for the third for the third article? Um, ten point two four five eight zero two. Yeah, because on this one you only got nine, nine point three. That looks like last year's number. Uh, yeah, I'll double. I'll um, make sure it's it's probably pulling uh, the cells from last yeah, year. Yeah, because cells. Franklin County Tech didn't go down; it went down last year. Right. Yeah, and so, it, it says for your twenty three budget, not twenty four budget. So yeah, that's an old rule. I'll just I'll update it with the new column. 
and I can get that out tonight. Sorry. But under the first column there, we have the, the 10, 20, 245, 802 as our budget bottom, bottom line there. We get like a plaque from the state or anything like that because we've gone over the $10 million line or we go from a, a town to a, a small city or something like that. We get to use a capital T now. Mm -hmm. You a mayor. <laughs> Okay. So you got a number? I need a number then to vote on. Uh, ten million two hundred forty-five thousand eight hundred and two. I got ten million two forty-five eight oh two. Yep. Okay. So Article Three. I have a motion. So I motion we include Article Three on the warrant. No, you just. Oh no! I, recommendation. I, yeah. Uh, I motion that the select board recommends Article Three. I second that motion. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Three zero. Article four. That is the capital budget. Um, the capital planning committee is recommending three items. Uh, the final year of the highway truck lease for twenty-seven thousand two hundred. Um, the X. Second to last um, phase of the exterior rim band replacement at the elementary school for 9750 and Sunderland's portion of the South County EMS ambulance replacement at 86561 And that is the non-contingent capital budget. And that's the, the 124 that we have currently, right? Yes. Okay. That, that totals one twenty three five hundred seventeen dollars. Okay, motion. A motion we include Article Four. No, we recommend oh, Article God. Four. We only got a few more to go. You yeah, wish. I know. Okay. A motion we, the select board recommends Article Four. Seconded. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor of the uh, capital funding projects. Signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, three zero. Article five. Article five is the contingent capital budget. Yeah. Um, so this would only happen if the voters pass, well, if this article passes and the voters pass a capital stabilization override of the polls. The projects that would be included are. Um, the first year's lease um, of a backhoe and a truck for the highway department, um, HVAC and carpet replacement at the library, um, an initial payment towards the HVAC upgrade at the fire station. Um, there is no actual estimate um, right now, so this would help us finalize the plan and get a real estimate. Uh, it would include both replacing the front steps here at the town office building and refinishing the floors, uh, install mini splits at the elementary school library, and that would be uh, $273,000. Okay. Right. Entertain a motion to recommend? I, I motion the select board recommends Article 5. Seconded. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor to recommend signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. So Article 6 is the 200, well, for the warrant it doesn't have a number, but um, funds to the capital stabilization. Okay. Article I motion six. we recommend Article 6. Second. Motion made and seconded to recommend Article 6. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three zero. Article 7, Jeff? Uh, Article 7 is to put funds in general stabilization. I motion the select board recommends Article 7. Seconded. Motion made seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. 
Article 8. Sorry, just noticed the paper. Uh, Article 8. Uh, we have a prior year bill, $205 for um, a heating oil bill. Okay, motion to recommend Article 8. I motion we recommend Article 8. Seconded. Motion made, seconded on Article 8. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 3 0. Article 9. Article 9 is the establishment of an opioid settlement stabilization fund um, so that all our opioid settlement funds would go into there. And this is creating the account, and then 10 would be actually putting the funds in. So can we do those two together, or are they separate? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. So I, that has been asked numerous times. The advice from the Mass Association of Health Boards Council is that we have two separate articles okay. um, as written. Yeah, you can. You, we, you, can, you can motion to recommend both articles. Oh, oh I thought you went, no. can we combine the two opioid no. articles? No. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not, can I motion those two together since they're similar? Absolutely. So, or connected. All right, so I motion we include, or I motion we recommend Article 9 and 10. Seconded. Article 9 and 10 has been a recommendation to, for the board recommendation on um, both of these articles that deal with the opiate settlement. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 To three zero. Thank you. Article eleven. Article eleven is creating a capital stabilization fund for the Frontier Regional School District. Um, and just to clarify, that would be a fund that Frontier can put money into. Okay. Article eleven. Motion. I motion we recommend Article eleven. Seconded. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All those. In favor of the recommendation, signify by saying aye. Aye. Three zero and eleven. Article twelve. So twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen are all CPA. Do we want to roll those all together? Um, let's let's do them one at a time, just because they're different. Okay. Okay. Uh, the first one is twenty three thousand five hundred dollars to um, repave the tennis courts and paint pickleball. Uh, court lines on the tennis courts at Frontier. Okay, I motion we recommend Article 12. Seconded. Motion recommend Article 12. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Jeff. Article 13. Um, Article 13 is $115,000 of CPA funds to uh, create two pickleball courts um, behind the town office building adjacent to the volleyball, between volleyball and, and baseball. Okay. I motion, should we recommend Article 13? Seconded. I have a motion made and seconded to recommend Article 13. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Article 14. Article 14 is, uh, again, CPA. It's for $60,000 um, to restore the Sunderland Congregational Church's steeple um, as a historic building in Sunderland. Can you do that one, please? Yes. Um, I and motion. We have a motion. I motion we recommend Article 14. Are you uh, abstaining? I'm going to abstain. This okay, one. and I will second for discussion. Just so understood that this um, it will be also accompanied by a preservation restriction to be held by the town of Sunderland. At this time, Crystal is not included in the voting. Article 14. All those in favor to recommend, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Jeff, 2-0. Good. Good. Article 15. Article 15 is um, sort of the housekeeping CPA article, 6000 for administrative um, expenses, $26,210.24, which is um, the 
uh, debt service on 120 North Main Street, and then splitting up um, the rest of the funds into the, the buckets, the CPA buckets. The Jennifer article. Yes. She's good. I'll, uh, motion? I motion we recommend Article 15. Seconded. Motion made and seconded to recommend the Jennifer article. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff Trigero. Article 16. Article 16 is the revolving uh, fund limit, expenditure limits. Uh, they're the same as last year. We looked at them last year, and um, the inspectors all seemed okay with them. So nothing has changed there. And so people know annually uh, revolving funds, the town has to set a limit on how much can be expended out of those revolving funds. Typically, revolving funds are funded from fees collected by either an inspector or, for example, the library community room. If they rent it out and collect a fee, that would go into the, the revolving fund that they could then spend out of without appropriation up to the amount in this article. So if they collected more than that and wanted to appropriate beyond that, they'd have to come to us or town meeting? Town meeting. They would okay. have to go to town meeting, yeah. Okay. Okay. Motion to recommend? My motion, we recommend Article 16. Seconded. Motion made and seconded to have the board recommend Article 16. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Article 17. Oh, man. I think he was in here, right? He was in here earlier today. Uh, article 17 is a, an article uh, requesting the select board receive authorization from town meeting to petition the legislature to allow a firefighter to work beyond the age of 65. Okay, motion. I motion we recommend article 17. Seconded. All those in favor of aye. article 17 signify by saying aye. Aye. Three zero. The Next, our 18 through 23 are called our consent articles. Motion to recommend the consent articles. My motion, we recommend the consent articles, 18 through 23. Seconded. Motion made and seconded. On the consent articles, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. All right, Jeffrey. We have a warrant. That can be posted. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. What else you got? Um, I think we're on to select board updates, unless there was anything else. That okay. Nathaniel? Um, I'm good at the time. I'm good. Crystal? I'm good. I spent an hour and a half talking about a million dollar budget and $1,500. Perfect. That sounds right. Yep. That's, that's why it's <laughs> town government. I mean, we, that's what we talk about. We, we talk about $1,500. But there, there's reason, and it's all about being consistent and consistent and trying to show our residents that we do everything we can to bring in a, a budget, a responsible budget every time. So, so you're going to be seeing, Dil, Zoe's going to be sending you some stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think our Budget will go down. Assessment will go down three thousand, four thousand dollars. Okay, yeah, every okay. bit helps. Yep. Okay. Next up, Jeff. Uh, the two updates: the restrooms. They're hoping to finish um, by early May, maybe mid May. Mm -hmm. The ones up here. Yeah, in the, in Riverside Park. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's exciting. 
Um, the other thing is we need to reschedule the poll hearing, the most recent poll hearing. When they did the survey, they realized the location of the manhole that they were going to put in was on private property. So oh, oops. They had, they're, they'd like to come back. Um, so my Are question, they going to actually show up this time? I hope so. Um, what do you think? Want to bet? Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> do we want to schedule this um, now, or do we want to wait till after town? I'm just trying to think. How do you get on next week's agenda? I mean, next week is too close. I'm yeah, sure. we we need to we need to publish the legal ad and everything. So oh, next week's the twenty. Next meeting's the twenty fourth, and then you have a. So if that if it's not next week, it's going to be after town meeting. Right. So what was it? Well, I guess it, it. Sorry, I was trying to. The question is more: Does the select board, as it currently stands, want to hear this poll hearing, or do you want to wait until there's a new select board member? Do you care? You don't care. You care. I don't think that this is such a huge decision that it would matter your way. Yeah. No, I just. Um, I don't. My point was, I don't think we can. It, it would be tough to get it for the yeah. Monday after town meeting. I think. Yeah. But how about the week after that? We could probably make that work. Yeah. Just at this point, whatever works. Okay. I don't. I don't uh, think it's going to be any different. Okay. Shouldn't be. Well, they have to make arrangements with the property owner, like a lifetime. Well, no, they, they're going to make arrangements to move it into public way, I would assume. Put on my property. I just never want to see another electric light. Let me know how that works for you, because I would like to try that one. Thank you. I, I saw that you're doing some surveying along. Uh, Plum Tree? Plum Tree. Where? In, in interesting layout. Do you see this? Did you see the flags on no, the palm tree? I, when? Two weeks ago? Week ago? Two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah. Uh, Before I went to North Carolina. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I've look, been for down the, there. look for the pink okay, flags. I drive down there every day. I know they're I there. I don't know how I didn't see but them. But you have to look on the north side of the road. So now I have Both. to learn north and south? They only put them on, on the north? On the other side of the road from your mom's <laughs> house. How's that? <laughs> That's where part of it is. Huh. I thought they were doing both sides. Uh, on on the way. on the east end, it seems most of it's on the north side, and it kind of like shades more towards the west as it goes down. But to take a look, take a ride. Okay. It's, it's 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 it's, and I can probably understand why it was done that way. When they put the road off, there probably weren't houses. Well, there probably weren't houses on the south side of the road, or as many houses on the south side of the road. So they shaded the road towards the south layout yeah. to give more, yeah, to give more room on the north, north side. side. If those were if those were the marks, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I know they were out surveying, so yeah. I'm sure that that's what they are. All right. I remember when there weren't many houses on that road. Well, that's what I'm saying. It, it, that's probably why they did it. And, it, and then as, it, it, so it starts like, like this is the road. So it starts like this. The town layout is way over here. And it's on this side, it's like on this side. Mm -hmm. Then it kind of goes like, as it goes down. Interesting. Yes. Okay. Motion adjourn. I motion we adjourn. Seconded. Motion made, seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Jeff. Declare us out. <laughs>